Welcome back. We'll be doing the 2020 P6 Town and Prelim papers today. Alright, question 1. Fauna Brown harvested 109,436 oranges last year. And they want you to express this number to the nearest 100,000. The first thing that I would like to do is to copy out the number. Okay? So this is the ones place. Tens. Hundreds. Thousands. Ten thousands. Lastly, this is the hundred thousands. Okay? So, like I said, this is a step by step tutorial, so I'll be going through everything. Okay? I'll treat every question as if you all don't understand anything, and I'm just gonna revise and go through everything. Okay? So, let's copy it out again. They want you to round off the nearest 100,000, so I'm going to underline it. This is the 100,000th digit. Okay? So when you underline whatever they want, always look the number on your right. Okay? If it's 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, the number that I underline remains the same. So in this case, it remains as 1. So the rest of the number turns into 0. Okay? So when I round off the nearest hundred thousands, my answer is just gonna be hundred thousand, which is option one. Okay? So yeah. If it's five, six, seven, eight, or nine, if the digit on the right side is this five digits, then we round up. So your one will become two. Alright? We'll get to it when we have questions like that, but try and follow this method. You won't go wrong. Alright? So I'm gonna move on. Question 2 is testing you on whole numbers and decimals. So 20 plus 7 over 10 plus 7 over 1000. Okay, so 20 is just 20. 7 over 10 is 0 0.7. Okay, 7 over 1000 is 0 0.007. So my answer would just be 20. Point seven zero seven. Okay, so my answer is number three. Now, let me show you guys, okay, more in depth on how I got the decimals. So, if you are really very familiar, just skip this part, alright? Go on to the next question. Seven over ten is the same thing as seven divided by ten. Okay, and seven is 7 can be written like that. Okay? When I want to divide something, right, I shift my decimals to the left side. So my decimal will become there. So it's 0 0.7. Because it's 1, 0, so I shift to the left side one time. Next one, 7 over 1,000. is the same thing as 7 divided by 1,000. So there are three zeros, right? So I'll move my decimals to the left side by three times. Let's go. 1, 2, 3. So it would be 0 0.007. Alright, so that's how I get 0 0.7 and 0 0.007. Okay, so how I added them together, I'm going to put it here. 20, I'm going to put 0 0.000. And then 0 0.7 would be 0 0.7, 0, 0. I need to fill in all the zeros. So that I can accommodate the last one, which is 0 0.007. This way, then I can add. Okay? It's a very common mistake. Got it? So this is why my answer is number 3. Alright? We watch if we need it, but if not, then let's move on together. Question 3. There are 70 adults and 30 children in the hall. 56 are adults. What is the ratio of number of children to the number of people 
the total number of people in the hall. So, my hall has adults and children. Go and draw a model. I just a very simple one. So, 56 are adults. That means most of you are adults. So, I'm going to cut it here. So, 56 adults. Okay? So, the rest are children, right? So, how to find here? How many children are there? My total is... 17. Okay? So, to find the number of children, I just take 70 minus 56. I'm going to do the working together with you. I'm going to get 14. Okay, so there are 14 children. The ratio of the number of children is to total. So, children is 14, total is 70. Let's divide both, simplify it, divide by 7, okay? I'm going to get 2, 10. Uh, we can divide again, you can further simplify by 2. So you're going to get 1 is 2, 5. Therefore, my answer is 2. Okay, so if a f uh, ratio can be further simplified, please do so. Don't be afraid. Can, you can keep dividing until you reach like number one or a number that you can't divide anymore and always be very careful read your question okay so it is children to total number of people and that's why your answer is two okay so if you get all three questions correct you're getting three marks and that's a good start all right i'm gonna move on for resting a racial question so three is the nine equals to 4 is to what? question mark so 3 is to 9 if you are familiar with multiples you realize that you can simplify it first and that's what we should do okay we are going to get 1 is to 3 so from 1 is to 3 how to make it 4 is to something I'll just start with a 4 okay so that means we get 4 is to 12 so your answer is just 12 okay really really straightforward but some students who are not familiar with ratio, they might be wondering how I get 3, how I get 4 from 3. So don't be anxious or anything. If you're not familiar, do whatever you can. On the right hand side, you can simplify. So go ahead and simplify it. Okay. When you get 1 on the left hand side, you realize 1 can become 4 by multiplying by 4. Okay. And when you do this, um, when you do something on the left side, you're going to do it on the right side also. So yeah, your answer will be... Two, all right. Pretty straightforward, but um, try not to be careless. Okay, I'm gonna move on. All right, for question five, which two lines in the figure are perpendicular to each other? So perpendicular, right? I'm gonna underline it, and it means right angle. Okay, so for those who don't know, lah. So let's see the first option, ACCD. ACCD is this angle and uh, it's not perpendicular because it's a obtuse angle. That means it's more than 90. Okay, obtuse means more than 90 degrees. Okay, so let's try the next one. So erase this. A, B, and C, D. A, B, and C, D. Uh, they are not even joined together. So they are parallel lines. No angles are formed. Okay? Parallel lines don't form angles because why? Parallel lines are lines that do not ever meet each other. Got it? So let's try the next one. A, E, and C, E. A, E, and C is here. And yeah, this is the answer we are looking for. This is the right angle. Okay. Let's try the next one also. I know that's not the answer, but let's at least go through it so people can understand it. A, C, and B, D, they are parallel lines. Okay. So it's not the answer also.
Alright, since they didn't put the parallel sign, right? I cannot say that they are parallel lines, but they do look like parallel lines to me, and this is how I'm going to approach this question. Okay, number one is out because it's obviously more than 90 degrees. Two and four are out because they obviously do not even form any angles, and this looks like a parallelogram to me. AE and CE is the only one that forms an angle that looks like 90 degrees, and that's it. That's your one mark. Your option should be three. Got it? Okay, I'm going to move on. All right. Question six. My teacher paid $25 for 50 notepads. How much did each notepad cost? When they say each notepad, right, that means they want to find out how much one notepad costs. Okay? Each equals to one. Okay? For those who don't know. Lah. Okay. 50 notepads. $25. Okay? Do you realize that the four options given are in cents? Since it's in cents, right, I will convert it first also. Okay, $25 is 0 0.00, right? So if I convert it to cents, it's going to be like that. 2,500 cents. Okay, I want to find one notepad. So what I would like to do is to do this. Pardon my crooked lines. Take 2,500 to divide by 50 and then times 1. So it's 2,500. Divide and over is the same thing. By 50, you times 1, you're going to get the same answer. But I'm just going to put it there, right? So we cancel away the zeros first. 250 divided by 5. Do it with me. Come on the right side. 0, 5, 0. Alright? So my answer is going to be 50 cents. Very straightforward. So your option is 3. And... Tao Nan school paper. Not going to lie, it's not, it's not that easy. Because I've seen the rest of parts of the paper. So whatever marks the MCQ is giving you, please take it all. You all will need it. Okay? So I'm going to move on to question 7, alright? If you need um, more time, can just pause the video or rewatch it, but if not, let's move on together. Question 7. Round off each of the numbers to the nearest whole number. Let me just copy out the numbers first, alright? Alright. So, the nearest whole number, I'm just going to underline the whole thing, because this is the whole number, okay? So, let's look at the number now, right hand side. It's 6, right? Do you remember the earlier question? If the number is 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, I'm going to round up. So, 32 becomes 33, okay? So, underline this whole thing, then let's look at the number on the right hand side. Oh, it's a 4. So, I don't need to increase my number. My number remains as 40, okay? Because I'm not rounding up. So, 9. Let's look at this digit. This digit is a 5. So, 5 I'll round up. So, 9 becomes 10. So, now we have to do order operations. Always underline whatever you're going to do next. So, it is 33 plus 40 times 10. Let's do a shortcut. 4 times 1 is 4. Then, let's just put the remaining zeros inside. Okay? 400 plus 33, 4, 3, 3. Your answer will be option 2. Alright, very very straightforward, but rounding off is 1, although operations is another 1, so they're testing you 2 chapters in a question. Okay, and it's not as hard as you think it is. So if you got all 4 questions on this page correct, good job to you. Uh, if not, then just practice. You'll be fine, okay? Don't worry too much if you're getting all wrong or whatever. Just practice, you'll be fine. Seriously. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Now, they want you to find the parameter of the semicircle. So, let's find the circumference of the semicircle first, okay? Circumference is this part, okay, of the semicircle. So, 
it is half because it's a semicircle times pi. My pi is 22 out of 7 and times diameter. My diameter is 14. Okay, so 14 is just 14 over 1. Let's do some cancellation, okay? So I divide both by 2. So now I'll divide both by 7. So at the end, I'll get 11 times 2 over 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1. So my answer is 22 cm. So this is the curved part. The curved part is 22 cm. I need to add on the diameter. So my answer is 22 plus 14. We are going to get, let's do the working together, alright? 36. Okay? 36 cm is your answer. And it is option 2. Okay? Very, very straightforward. Don't forget to add the diameter and you'll be fine. Okay? In this figure, BCD is a square. So, when I see squares, I will draw this thing. Because it means that they are the same side. Alright? And BEF is an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle also means that they have the same side. So, do you realize that B is actually one side of the triangle? So, since they're all the same, I'm going to draw single lines on them. Okay? They're basically all the same sides. Got it? So, squares, when you see squares, we all know that there is four right angles, which I'm going to draw. But the fourth right angle, I'm not going to draw because there's a line there and it will look very, very messy. And then, for equilateral triangle, each angle will be 60 degrees, okay? Because all three are the same, and if they are the same, that means I can just take the total to divide by 3. I'm going to do the working for those of you who needs to see how I get uh, 60, okay? And that's how I got my 60. So I'm going to write here 60. Okay. Find BFC. BFC is this, which is the base of a isosceles triangle. So what should I do now? Let's find out what's FBC first. Angle FBC will be equals to 60 degrees plus 90 degrees. Okay, and let's do the working together. You get 150. Okay, you get 150 here. So, I need to take the total angle in a triangle, which is 180 degrees, to minus away 150 first. Okay, do the working here together with me. I'm going to get 30 degrees. Okay. So once I get 30 degrees, I just need to divide by 2 because the base of isosceles triangle is the same. And I'm going to do my working here. Okay, I'm going to get 15. Okay. Got it? So this is just 15. And my option should be 1. It's very straightforward. So for those of you who needs to check your work, um, one way you can see if your answer is correct is to add them all together. So in a triangle, you will add up to 180 degrees. So if you take 15 plus 15 plus 60 plus 90, and if you get 180, that means your answer most of the time will be correct. So if you add up all the angles in a triangle and don't add up the 180, then you're supposed, you, you should actually redo your question and find a different answer. Okay, that's one way you all can check the answer. Alright, if... Yeah, I think that's about all, but yeah, keep practicing, okay? If you need help, just rewind it a little bit, but if not, I'm going to move on. Question 10. Let's read the question together, okay? The mass of box A is 6 kg. The total mass of box B and C is also 6 kg. So let's make, let's make things a bit easier. Let's draw, okay? A is 6 kg. So B plus C is also 6 kg. So what's the total of these three? It's just 6 plus 6, which is 12 kg. Okay. So this is the total of A, B, C, and they want you to find average. Average, we use this triangle. The tan triangle. Okay, T is total. A is your average. And N is your number of 
boxes in this case. Okay, so what is the average mass? If I want to find average, I need to take total to divide by n. So my total is number of boxes and my total is 12. My number of boxes is 3. So it's 12 divided by 3. No working is needed. This multiplication. So your answer is 4 kg. Okay. Your answer is option 4. You guys understand? Very, very straightforward. And I'm going to move on. Alright, let's do question 11 now. What percentage of the triangle is shaded? Hmm. It's a two mark question. So. I see, I think they decided to take out the numbers to make it a little bit harder. So anyway, there's no numbers. So what should we do? There are no numbers, and this doesn't mean we cannot put our own numbers. Alright, so look at the base of the bigger triangle. There are four straight lines, right? That means those four parts are equal. So I can just give them a number. I can say that, I can say that all of them are 1 cm. Okay, so that means this is also 1 cm. And this one cm, and this one cm. Okay, so all there are one cm. And if you realize the height of the triangle, it's double line, so that means these two are different from the base. So I'm gonna give them a number. Probably gonna give them like four cm. So that means this is four cm, and this is four cm. Okay. So what percentage of the area is unshaded? So with the numbers that I placed in, we can find out what's the area of the large triangle, what's the area of the small triangle, and then we can find the percentage. So don't worry that, don't worry if you want to put like other numbers, you can put other numbers. Just make sure if you put 2 cm, everything has to be 2. If you put 10 cm, everything has to be 10. Because what we are dealing with is percentage. It's relative to the numbers that we are putting in. There'll be no the answer that comes out will be correct and will be the correct percentage basically. So let's find the area of the large triangle. The area of the large triangle, my base, I'm going to draw. So my base will be 4cm. My perpendicular height is going to be 8cm. So this is the area of the larger triangle. So it's half times base times height okay so 4 times 8 is 32 32 over 2 will be let's do our working at the side here 16 I'm gonna get 16 okay so 16 cm square is my uh, bigger triangle so now I'm gonna draw the small triangle my base is 2 cm my height is 4 cm so the area of this triangle is half times 2 times 4, which is equals to 8 out of 2, because 2 times 4 is 8, so I'm going to get 4 cm square. Okay, so what percentage is unshaded? Unshaded, I will take the bigger one to minus the smaller one. So I'm going to get 12 cm square. Let me just do the working here for those who need it. Okay. So percentage of the area that's unshaded, that means I take unshaded, which is 12, to divide by over the total. The total is 16, because that's the area of the large triangle, 2 times 100. Okay, so let's do some cancellation. I can divide top and bottom by 2. So I'm going to get 6, I'm going to get 8. Okay, so now I'm going to divide by 2 again. I'm going to get 3, I'm going to get 4. Okay, so 3 times 100 over 4 will be equals to 300 over 4. Then let's just do a long division. You're going to get 75%. So your answer will be option. Okay, so for those of you who feel like, uh, should I put numbers on my own? How should I do it? Is there an R method? If you're a bit worried, 
try out different numbers and see if you can get the option 4 also. And when you get option 4, you realize that this method actually works. Okay, you can put any other CM. Okay, your percentage that comes out will still be 75 CM. Ah, 75%. Alright, so if you don't understand, we watch it. But if you understand, then let's move on together with me, alright? And this is 2 marks. It's quite worth it. Okay, so uh, I can come up with numbers that are easy to deal with, like even numbers. And yeah. So if you got it, that's 2 marks for you. Okay? Okay, I'm gonna move on. Okay, question 12. Since we're at 2 mark questions, the question's difficulty really increases. And don't worry, we'll do it together, okay? And then you just have to watch and then do it yourself again later, okay? Question 12. A small square is placed over a large square. The length of each square is a whole number, okay? The area of the large large square that is not covered by the small square is 56 cm square. What is the parameter of a large square? So, they keep going on about square, square, squares, right? So one thing to know about squares is that they have the same sides. Since squares have the same sides, I'm going to draw a small square, okay? I'm going to shade it also. It's literally the small square you see in, uh, in the diagram. So one thing about squares is that they have the same size. So if one side is 1, the other side will also be 1. So my area will be 1. So for the small square, right, the area can be anything in this list. Okay, since they're the same. So I'm just keep going um uh, I'm just gonna keep doing it until I get a bigger number. Okay. Probably gonna stop at ten times ten or something. Let's just see how it goes. Okay, I'm gonna stop at twelve. So it's okay if you use more time to do questions like that, okay? It's perfectly fine. And uh, it will be worth the mark, and worth the time. So my area of small square can be anything in this list. I'm not sure which one it is, but since it's a square, and the sides are whole number, what I'm doing is I'm taking whole numbers to times another whole number that's the same, okay? Because squares, all right? So for the large square, right, the same thing is going to happen. It will be any number on this list, okay? So what they are saying is that, Big area minus small area equals to 56 cm square. So let's do a bit of uh, guess and check. So big area, if I'm going to choose 100 as a big area, my small area must be le uh, lesser than 100. So let's try... 25. So I'm choosing this and this. Okay, I'm going to minus it and I'm going to see what's my answer. I'm going to get 75. So um, 75 same square is not the answer because I need it to be 56. So I'm just going to cross it. So let's try another option. Maybe you try 81 minus maybe minus 25 again. Then let's see what's the answer. Do I get 6 and 5? Okay, I got it. 56 cm square. So that means my big area my big square, the sides are 9. And my small squares, the sides are 5. Okay? Do you understand? Try to understand this, okay? It's tough, but once you understand it, you'll feel very fulfilled and satisfied. Okay? What's the parameter of the large square? So, parameter is just adding up all the sides, right? So, let's do it. 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9. Which is also equals to 9 times 4. Which is equals to 36 cm. So my answer is 3. Got it? So this is a bit of guess and check. I got a bit lucky during my second attempt. 81 minus 25, I get 56. But 
if you don't get the answer on your second attempt, just keep trying. Take a big number to minus a small number until your difference is 56. Okay? There are not a lot of things you can use on in this list. So, don't worry. And just do it. Okay? Don't worry about the time. Don't worry, worry about not getting the marks. Okay? At the end of the day, if you keep trying, you will get it by the time PSLE comes. Okay? I'm going to move on to question 13, alright? Question 13. A wire is cut into two pieces. One piece is made into an equilateral triangle of sides 9 y cm long. So one thing I like to do, if you guys watch uh, a few of my videos, is that I like to make use of what they give before finishing the whole question. Before I finish reading the whole question. So I don't get overwhelmed. I don't feel like a lot of information are tossed at me. Okay, I read sentence by sentence, and I do it sentence by sentence, okay? So, equilateral triangle means my sides are the same. So, if 1 is YCM, everything will be Y also. Okay? I'm not going to put the CM first, I'm just going to put Y for now. Okay? The other piece is made into a square of sides 8CM long. I'm just going to draw a square. Not drawn to scale. So, squares, they also have the same side. So, it will also be 8, 8, 8, 8. Okay? What is the length of the wire before it is cut? So y plus y plus y equals to how many y's are there? Three. Okay. Eight plus eight plus eight plus eight, which is also equals to eight times four, is thirty-two cm. Now that I'm gonna put the units. Okay. What is the length of the wire before it is cut? I'll just have to take three y plus thirty-two. And that's my answer. I'm just adding it together, okay? Because they are made from the wire, okay? What is the length of the wire before it is cut? Your answer will be option 3. Got it? Very, very simple. Draw your diagrams in pencil. And, you know, the whole paper is yours. You can doodle, do whatever you need to help you get the answer you need. Okay, teachers are not going to scold you. And it's really all the effort that counts, okay? And this is two marks. This is probably the easiest two marks in this whole paper as of now. Okay? I'm gonna continue and do question 14 now. If you don't understand, rewind. If you understand, move on together with me, alright? So, question 14. A supermarket gave a discount of $3 for every $40 spent. So, like I said, I like to do things sentence by sentence. So, if you like, follow me, alright? So, if I spend $40, right, how much do I actually pay? I have a discount of $3. So, what I'm actually paying is just $37, thanks to the discount. Okay? Discount means you don't pay the amount of money. Okay? They're selling you, it to you at a cheaper price. Alright? So, Mr. Lim bought some groceries and paid $119. What was the price of the groceries before the discount? So, how many sets of $37 are there? There's one way to do this question, which is to take 119 to divide by 37. But y'all are in primary 6. I don't think dividing by 37 is something that is very easy for you guys. So let us list out the 37s, okay? So 37 plus 37 equals to, let's do it together, 74. Okay, so let's take 74 to plus another 37. Let's see what we get. We get $111. So, right here is two sets, really. So, right here is another set. So, it is three sets of 37. Okay? So, I paid... Okay, Mr. Lim paid $119. So, that means there's a remaining of one one. 
I mean, there's a remaining of eight dollars. Okay, so the reason why I didn't take one 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 to plus thirty seven is because I know that it will give me a number that's bigger than hundred nineteen. So I stop here. So what Mister Lim did was, he has. Three sets of thirty-seven plus an eight dollars. Okay, try and follow ah. Uh. What is the price of the groceries before discount? So for every thirty-seven dollars, you see there's actually a three dollar discount, right? So actually, he bought forty dollars. Okay, for the last eight dollars, there's no discount because he didn't hit forty dollars spent. You guys understand? See. $37 is after discount, $40 is before discount, which is what the question is asking you for. Got it? Try and follow, alright? So 40 plus 40, you're gonna get 80. Then let's add another 40. I'm gonna get 120. And then 120, I'm gonna add 8. And that's my answer. 128. Okay, your answer is option 2. Got it? Mm, don't be too afraid. Like I said, have neat handwriting. Give yourself space in your working. So anytime you want to change anything or you want to add on stuff, there's space for you to do so and you don't feel like, you don't feel burdened by you. Okay? So, not the easiest question if you are not, if you are quite weak in math, but it's worth it to try and understand this question and then we do it on your own. Okay? The videos will always be here for you, so what you have to do is really just to trust yourself and trust the process of working hard, and you'll be fine, seriously. Alright, I'm gonna move on, alright? Alright guys, we're at the last question now, question 15. You all should be a little bit happy because I'm secure it's gonna be over soon. It's two marks and hopefully it's not too hard, alright? So let's start. ABCD is a square, so as usual, if it's a square, this is what I like to do, alright? And CE equals to CD. Okay, so if CD is a sum of square, then I'm just going to draw another line here then. And EDC is 68. Alright, find CBE. Okay. So, one thing to note is that even though isosceles angles can have the same sides, it doesn't mean that triangles CBE and CED have the same angles inside. Okay? Because the base can be different CM, they can be like, yeah, it can be different and then your angles will change. So, let's deal with CED first. CED is a triangle that's isosceles, so this is 68, alright? Fine, what's this first? Okay, I think total of triangle to minus away the two base triangles, uh, uh, the two base angles, I mean. So let's do it together with me, one by one. Okay, so you got it, you're going to get 44, okay, so that angle is 44 degrees. So since you know that it's 44 degrees, can you find out why is this angle? BCD, this whole thing, is a part of a square, so it's 90 degrees, so what I need to do is just to take 90 degrees minus 44 degrees, okay, let's do the working together. you get 46 degrees. Okay, so now that it's 46 degrees, can we find out what is CBE? We can just take the total angle in the triangle to minus away 46 degrees first. So we minus away the, the angle at the top. 
So let's do a walking. We're going to get 134 degrees. And then we have to divide by 2 because 134 degrees is shared by the two base angles. Okay? You're going to get 67 degrees. Alright? And that's just your answer. And that's also 2 marks. Option 3. So this is quite an easy 2 marks. But some of you might be careless and think that they are the same, so you just immediately put option 4 and then you lose your marks. So don't do it. Try to do your working before writing any answers, unless you are really 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 in a rush. Okay, so congrats, you guys finished this MCQ paper successfully. And I hope you guys aimed for full marks, okay? So I'll just end now. And remember to watch to subscribe. So that you can, so that you know when I'm gonna post my next video. The next video will just be booklet B, okay? So this is how it goes: booklet A, booklet B, then paper two. I'm just gonna try and post twice a week or something to help you guys. Okay? It's close to PSLE now, and just keep working hard. You'll be fine. I'll see you.